G'day and welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna to have a look at the Spike All-in-One Pressure Relief Valve, or PRV like us professionals call them. <laughs> Don't do that. First off, I'd just like to thank Spike for sending me this unit. Uh, it's not a paid review at, at all or anything like that. They haven't told me what to say. These are all my words, but they did send it to me for review. So let's have a quick look in the box. All right, this is a solid unit. I can already tell that is over a kilogram. It's very well built. And it comes with a gas post and a gauge. We'll quickly put it together. I will use some thread tape. It's actually gas thread tape. I find it a bit thicker. You don't have to use as much. So I just screw in the gauge. And then of course the gas post. I'd been doing other things in the shed and whatever I had on my hands had dissolved the paint a little bit. That's why it looks a bit smudged. And that's your valve, heavy duty stuff. So let's just have a look at this without my hands getting in the way. It has a two inch glycerin filled pressure gauge. Goes from naught to 30 PSI. Although this pressure relief valve goes to 15 PSI. It has a CO2 post, so you can apply CO2 into your fermenter for pressurizing or transferring. The sanitizer cup has a drain port with a removable sleeve. Once you remove the sleeve, you'll need a cup or a hose or something to drain the sanitizer from the airlock cup into. Because if you don't and you release that pressure, you're probably going to end up with a shower of sanitizer. This is where you adjust the pressure. You simply twist the top adjustment knob to increase or decrease the pressure inside your fermenter. This allows for everything from pressure fermenting, the spunding, carbonating or pressure transfers. They do say when you fully screw it down, it'll be 15 PSI. In my opinion, that's worth checking once you get pressure in it. Lastly, the quick pressure relief valve plunger. This is handy for emergencies. If you have to get that pressure out really fast, you can just hit that top button. As mentioned earlier, you might cop a shower if there's some sanitizer in the cup there. But once you've emptied the cup, it's also used for releasing the pressure from the fermenter. So there's only one way to find out how this works. That's to get a brew in. I had a no chill lager cube ready to go, so I'm using that. I close it all up. There's another bit of product placement. <laughs> Put some oxygen in there using the spike oxygen kit. Just do 30 seconds of that. Then I throw some CO2 pressure in there so I can test to see if the PRV works, and I can also set it at the pressure I want to ferment at. Oh, we're up about nine. I normally wouldn't go this high, but I'm not sure how long I'm gonna be away. So if I leave it at around nine, 10, I can cold crush it at the end. Again, when I'm on holidays using the wrap fridge and it'll be cold crushed, you know, cold for when I get home. Oh, I can hear something. Gas just went out of one of these pressure relief valves. But that's at 10, so it didn't start coming out till we got over 10, so that's good. Exactly what I wanted. No, see, it's not coming out of there, but if we loosen it off, put some pressure out. There you go, the bubbles start coming through. So we've got a small bubble coming through. And we're set just over 10, about 10. That'll do me for this. That's what'll happen when you're fermenting. 
of course you can use a non-foaming sanitizer just like phosphoric acid plain phosphoric acid and that's what i did after the first brew i'll whack a link in the description for that if you let that pressure out now that's going to spurt everywhere so you drain the liquid from the drain which you can't really see at the moment this footage is a little bit grainy because it was late at night but i can show you how i drained the liquid out it's not a lot in there, so it just pulls on the top of my fermenter, then I towel it up later. It was just easier to do it that way. To be honest, I don't bother using liquid in it anymore. I'm not fussed about seeing bubbles. I haven't seen bubbles in a ferment for a very long time since I've been using spunding valves. So it doesn't really worry me at all, but I understand some people like to see the bubbles. So I just use it dry these days. Because if you go to release the pressure, that's just going to spurt everywhere, just like this. <laughs> That's not what you want to do. Don't do that. You need to be careful of this button. Down or up, it uh, it will release. <laughs> so we're in. I do have to put some fluid in there. I don't have to. You can use it without fluid. But if you want to see the bubbles, put some fluid in there. Sanitizer, vodka. So again, a big thank you goes out to Spike for sending me the unit. I hope you liked the review. Let them know. Maybe they'll send me some more stuff to review. <laughs> That unit's gonna last me a very long time. So if you liked the video, please press like, subscribe if you aren't subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one. And a big thank you goes out to my patrons who saw most of this video a long time ago, because that's what happens when you join my patron. Sometimes you get to see videos a bit earlier than everyone else. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Please consider joining our Instagram page and Facebook group.